Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you the 5x7 version of the floating frame card. So I made the 6x6 version a few weeks ago now. Beautiful, love this. And I keep this one displayed in my craft room. But I made this version, and this was the first one I made actually during a Facebook Live. And you can see this gorgeous arrangement of flowers in the middle there. So just, you know, two different ways there of kind of decorating it. You can also add acetate over the front, turn the whole thing into a shaker. You could even pop a little gift in there. Lots of ways that you can use this. It's a deconstructed shadow box frame. I've made many of them on the channel before and I'll share the playlist up here so you can check out the other styles and sizes there. But it's really easy to make, so let's get started. So you don't need the supplies that I've got here to make it. These are just the ones that I've used. So today I've used the linen texture print um, for the background. This one here was an older Crafter's Companion one that I used, but I thought the linen one would look lovely. So that one and then the flowers are from the Sharon Callis Papercraft Society box. This is kit 42. And I also use the sentiment from here as well. So this is the stamp set. So I've taken the thank you for always being there for me. And then you get these really great dies here, which will create the different flowers. So you get three of them like so. And what I do is just show you, these are the ones that I've already made because I thought you didn't need to see me make every one, but you can watch that Facebook Live if you'd like to watch these being done live, because I I did do all of those. I've got one of the daisies just rolled, so I'm gonna unroll that and you know, open it up in a moment. But that's how they cut. So I die cut three of this size, four of this size, and then five of this one. But I cut them all in white cardstock and then I used my inks to color them because I wanted brown detail here for the centers and then this pinky red for the, the main petals. And then with the daisy, when I cut this one, I inked all of this bit yellow, but just left the rest of it white. So you can see the yellow centers there. And then with the blue, I done like a light kind of, well, it was actually this color here, twisted citron at the bottom. And then I went up to Mermaid Lagoon and Tumbled Glass in the, the main part there. So that's the colours and kind of how I created those. And then when you've cut them, you want to fold them in half. I like to just place a ruler through the middle and then just bend it around. I just found it a bit easier to do it that way. You could also just score right through the middle as well. But this was actually a little bit quicker as well. And you'll see there, they're all offset from each other. So they fill like the gaps there, if I lie it down, can you see how they fill in between each other? So lots of people say that you only need to add your glue at the ends, I, you know, each end, but I've been using it all the way along just because I found it would stop it unraveling. But do what you find works best. Like I said, you don't need these dies or these flowers to make the card. I'm just showing you for anyone who's got the kit, maybe hasn't used it yet. So I'm just adding a little glue there and then I'm just taking my tweezers here right at the edge and then just start rolling it around and then just pinch it together until that's dry and then you'll have something like this and then you can just open up all of the petals and I found then you could really kind of rearrange them once you would stuck it down onto the card but you can see how cool that all looks once you start moving all this around and opening it up and then again with this one here, the daisy, this is my favourite. I think this looks really realistic. So just oh, open those all up. Again, you'll probably find this easier to do once you've stuck it down. Just hold the bottom there. It's a bit easier then to open it out. How cool is that? I think they look wonderful. So I've got all of those ready. So I just thought I'd quickly show you that part. So to make the shadow box frame, or the floating shadow box frame, you want to cut yourself two pieces of two and a half by five and a half. And along the two and a half side, you're gonna score at half, one, one and a half, and two. Fold and burnish all of those score lines. And then you'll want two pieces of two and a half by three and a half. And along the two and a half side, you're going to score the same. So at half, one, one and a half and two. And then along the short side, you're going to score at half and three, but just down to the first score line. OK, and then you can either just flip it or rotate it. But you want to then score again along that other side at half and at three, just down to the first score line. These are just cut lines. They're just um, 
a guide for you so it doesn't matter which way that you've scored them i've then got my mat layer here this was four and three quarters by six and three quarters and that will be stuck onto my five by seven card blank i've also got this piece which is for the back of the frame so you can see i've got the white card here so that is actually one separate piece you can stick it onto anything and that is three and a quarter by five and a quarter okay with both of the pieces on the right hand side of the long side you just want to take a little bit off this is just going to help ensure everything lies flat so i've just taken it off of that side and then again off the long side So this one you're going to leave as it is. We're just going to stick that together in a moment. But with this one, along one of the sides where you've scored those short little score lines, you want to cut down, and I'm removing the score line as I do this. So cut down and then cut across and down. So you've got like that little chimney look. So again, on this side, I'm going to cut down and then down and across. Okay. And then with the other two in these corners, you're just going to remove them completely. Again, I'm taking out all of the score line as I do that. So on this piece here, along that edge where you just trimmed a bit off, you're going to add your glue all the way along that panel. OK, so then fold it over. So you have two folded over and you'll have three panels on the back. And this one you're just going to fold over. And by cutting a little bit away, that should all fold really nice and flat. You won't have anything bulky. And again, just fold it in the other direction. And now you've got a perfect tube. So do that on both pieces. I've already got that one ready. Next, we want to make this shape here. Actually, this is an, a different way that I've been cutting them. And I've found, I think it's just a little bit neater. So you can actually cut across the other end as well. So where I just cut down, just do the same as the other side. So it's just mirrored now, okay? The edge that you took a little bit off, so for me it's this one here. Add your glue all along the edge there and again, fold those two over and then fold that one over. Now I like to have all the joins at the bottom, so the join here will face down, that one will face down. So they're gonna be like this. And then again, the joins, so they're at the bottom but facing inside and they're gonna slot in like this to form the frame. And then again, that one will slot in like so. And then the base here will hold that all together like this. So all you need to do is add a little glue just inside the triangle pieces here. Like I said, if you want to keep it how I showed you originally to cut it, so you've got more of a square here, then keep it like that and just add the glue all on the square part. But this again just kind of gets rid of bulk and I just... I don't know, I found it a little bit easier. Can you see how neatly that all, you know, fits in there? Just to ensure you've got a right angle, just use your mat or maybe a T-squared ruler or something to just allow you to get that perfect right angle. I'm just going to bring it around this way like so, so I can see that. So just going to hold that there for a moment. And then I'm going to take the other one here and just, again, add a little glue like so. And then pop that in this end. And again, just use a corner here just to make sure that I've got that nice and straight okay and then with this end here you have to do these all at the same time so i'm just going to add a little glue in there and there and then also in here and in here and, and then just slot that all in together and just hold that all together until it's all dry so now i'm adding my glue all behind the frame there just focusing on the inner frame so that none of the glue, you know, oozes out anywhere. And then just position that. I've cut it a little bit, you know, smaller so that it, it won't kind of hang out the sides. So although, you know, this is a five by seven size, it's the, it's the card that's the five by seven. That is going to fit on your smaller cards as well. So if you prefer making those smaller cards, then this will still fit. If you've got any kind of bits slightly overhanging you can trim those away just neaten it up a little bit so now i'm going to add glue all on the back of this and then i can position that now in the middle of this piece so for the sentiment i've just trimmed that so it's three and a half long 
the width is going to vary for you. Mine's about an inch because of the sentiment I'm using. So I'm going to follow the same kind of arrangement as this, but I might have the sentiment in the middle this time and the flowers kind of going underneath. And then the butterfly can still sit there. So let's just pop these down and then I'm going to use my hot glue to secure them into place. I want you to be able to see all of the bright colours. I'm going to squash them in more together, but something like that. I think that looks really pretty. So there's the finished card. I think it's stunning. Love the heat embossed sentiment on this one. I think this is my favourite just because I love bright colours, but I did really enjoy putting this one together. And I think it's nice to see the sentiment, you know, slightly different as well. So whether you have your design, you know, running underneath or just towards the top or the bottom, you know, you can really change this up and make it work with whatever it is you're using. So as always, thank you for watching today. I'll link all of the product that I've used in the description box below. I have those other shadow box tutorials coming up now as well. So you might want to watch those next. If you've enjoyed today, give me a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel and I'll see you all again soon. Take care. Bye.